wanted to discuss physical TBR, specifically my physical TBR. So in April of 2020, I got myself back into reading and I went ham on the book buying. I was buying any book and every book. If I had seen one person say something good about it, I was adding it to my library because I wanted to have a lot of options. It was so exciting. It was so new. And I just couldn't hold myself back. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So over the course of 2020 and then at 2021, I ended up accumulating a lot of books, a lot more than I was physically able to read. I somehow ended 2021 with 263 books on my physical TBR, which was extremely overwhelming. So I made two goals for myself in the coming year, as in 2022, as in last year, because now it's 2023. One was to start reading books off my physical TBR to try and get that number lower. And then another goal was to stop buying a lot of books at a time to try to not make that number go any higher. And I actually succeeded in both of those because I have every single book on my physical TBR behind me and there are only 100 books there. So somehow I got that number from 263 down to 100. And this coming year, my goal is to get that number down to zero. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I got that number lower, how I'm going to get that number even lower this coming year. And also I'm going to quickly show you every single book that is on my physical TBR as in basically my 2023 actual TBR. So before I discuss how I actually got 163 books off of my physical TBR this past year without actually reading all 163 of them, I want to first discuss how I didn't really add any books to my physical TBR this year. I did technically add 20 books, like 20 books behind me are books that I did buy this past year, but I feel like that is not a lot of books in comparison, especially because knowing myself, I can technically read all 20 books in like literally one month, maybe two, if I don't read every single one of them like back to back. So my point is, is that I think that by buying less books, which is exactly what I did, I ended up very much helping me and my physical TBR specifically. Not only did it actually help me not grow my TBR because anytime that I got a book, because I was only buying one or two at a time, I would read them right away. And therefore they didn't end up getting stuck on my shelf because it took me too long to get to them. But also I actually ended up enjoying the experience much more because I personally don't really believe in like book buying bands. Like if I want a book, I'm going to get a book, especially because I personally can't afford it. So I'm not really holding back monetarily wise. I was only holding back because it's like, do I need this or do I not need this? And because I didn't really need it, I held myself back because that's a smart thing to do. And instead, anytime that I really wanted a book or I was feeling the urge, just like get something new, I would get something new, but I would only get like one or two new things. Therefore I'd read them right away. And therefore they wouldn't really like get stuck on my TBR. And that was something that really ended up helping me. And not only did it really help me for my physical TBR, but I also ended up enjoying that a lot more than actually doing large book hauls. I thought that it was really fun to do large book hauls. And I'm very happy that I did them when I did them, but I think I'm over that phase in my life. And now I really just want to get books when I want them. I don't really need to get like a crap ton of books at a time to have a thousand options because like you see behind me, I already have a thousand options. Well, not a thousand, a hundred, but you know what I mean? My point is, is that for whatever reason, it ended up very much working for me. And I'm very happy that I decided to do that because I found a new way of going about book buying that I actually enjoy a lot more than book hauls. So I got to say all around the board that ended up being a big win for me. So with that said, how did I actually get 163 books off my physical TBR? So first off, I did unhaul a handful of them. There were some books where I'm like, I know I'm never going to read them and they're just haunting my TBR and I don't really want them around anymore. So I ended up unhauling them and that's how I did get rid of a handful of them. And then on top of that, I did also end up reading a handful of them. So what I did was I actually got into audiobooks this past year. I had mentioned that in a previous video of mine, but that was something that I really started to get very used to this year. And how I got used to them was to start to read some books that I wasn't really extremely excited to read because right when I got into audiobooks, I was like, I don't really want to waste a physical book that I'm excited to read on an audiobook. I really want to see all the words with my eyes. But there were some books that I was somewhat excited to read. I just didn't really want to spend the time of sitting with them. So that is kind of how I not only like got books off my TBR, but also how I got myself used to reading audiobooks. And then on top of all that, I have also decided to cut some books off my physical TBR, even if I still own them and have not yet read them. So let me explain. First of all, because I have this whole YouTube and TikTok and Instagram thing, which I'm super grateful for. So thank you all so much for being here because without you guys, I, I wouldn't be able to explain what I'm about to explain. But because of all of that, I do sometimes get some books for free. Sometimes authors reach out and send me books. Sometimes publishers send me books. Sometimes some of you guys send me books. And I'm extremely grateful for every single free book that I've ever received. It always makes my day anytime I get a surprise package in the mail. But my point is, is that because I did not actually choose any of those books for myself and because I did not actually spend any of my personal money on those books, I've decided to no longer let them actually haunt my TBR. Even if I still want to keep them around, even if one day maybe I'll actually get around to them because I am excited to read them. They're just not like, you know, top priority for me. I no longer want to actually let them be a part of my TBR because if one day I don't get to them, I'm not going to really feel bad about them because I didn't spend my actual money on them. I feel like that makes sense and it's a very valid reason. So basically cut all of that off my physical TBR, which I wasn't doing this time 
last year. So I did have some books that I had gotten for free that were on my list from last year that now no longer are on there. And then all the ones that I did accumulate this year are no longer being counted towards my physical TBR. And then also on top of that, there are some books that I have just grown out of. Sometimes like, you know, some YA books that I had gotten a long time ago that I thought I'd get to and then never got around to. I no longer really have any interest in reading, but I don't necessarily want to unhaul them because I really still want to keep them a part of my library. Like I had bought them for a reason. I just kind of like, you know, I'm no longer down to actually read them, but I still think that they'd be a solid book. And there's something that maybe one day I'll be able to like, you know, loan out to somebody, or maybe one day, like keep them for my kids. Who the hell knows? But my point is that there are some books that I still own that I have not yet read that I don't really want to read, but I don't either want to get rid of. And therefore I've decided to cut those off of my physical TBR, just kind of like come to terms with the fact that I want to keep these around, but I don't really want to read them. And that is okay. And then kind of the same thing with that is that there are some books, specifically series that let's say I've read the first book in this series, but I owned all the books in the series, but I don't really want to continue on with the series, but I don't either want to unhaul them for whatever reason. I decide to cut those off my physical TBR, which was something that I was not doing this time last year. I had a handful of books that I was counting towards my TBR that were like second and third books in a series because I'm like, yeah, one day I'll get back to them. This year I've decided that nah, 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 I'm probably not going to get back to them. Still want to keep them around though, but now I'm going to take them off my physical TBR. So add all of that together. That is basically how I ended up taking off a lot of books off of my physical TBR in the year of 2022. <laughs> so with that said, I still have 100 books on my physical TBR and I would like all of them to be off my TBR by this time next year. So how the hell am I going to do that? Well, if I break it down, I really only have to read eight to nine books per month, which I feel like is pretty reasonable for me specifically because I generally read 20 plus books per month. Like sometimes I'll read a little bit less. Sometimes I read a little bit more, but I feel like that is still less than half of the amount of books that I'm reading per month that have to come off of my physical TBR. So I feel like that is somewhat of a goal. Like that's somewhat of a mission that I'm going to have to like mentally keep reminding myself about, but also I feel like that is somewhat reasonable. So that is step one. And then also step two, I actually already did all of the research before I started making this video, but I double checked and the majority of the books behind me, I'm actually able to get via audio from my library via the Libby app. That is the way that I listen to the majority of my audiobooks because I'm not really into like, you know, spending money on audiobooks. It's just not something that I really enjoy doing. So I just listen to audiobooks that I can get for free via my library. And since the majority of the books behind me, I am able to get via audio from my library for free. I do plan to read the majority of them that way, because like I said earlier, that was a way that I was doing it this past year. And it really ended up working out for me because if I wasn't really itching to pick up any of these books, but I needed to start a new audiobook, I would just read one of the books that are on my physical TBR so that I could knock it off, still enjoy it because I enjoyed it a little bit more without having to actually waste my time physically sitting down with it. And it just, it all around the board really worked out for me. So that is a way that I think I will very realistically end up knocking off the majority of the books that I have behind me. And then on top of that, I do know that like, you know, I'm probably not gonna end up reading every single one of these. So I have decided that this is the last year I'm going to let any of the books that are currently behind me stay on my physical TBR. If this time next year, any of the books that I'm about to share with you are not actually like done and read, they're no longer going to be counted towards my physical TBR. Just the same way how I said, I already have some books that I've decided I'm going to keep around, but I'm no longer going to like plan on ever reading. I'm either going to let those books be a part of that collection, or I'm going to end up on hauling them. We'll decide then. My point is, is that one way or another, this is the last time that I'm counting any of the books behind me on my physical TBR. So with that said, let's go through all of them. First up, I have the first four books in the Plate of Prisoner series. I'll probably end up pushing these off until like the next book in the series comes out because I'm pretty sure it's coming out in like June or so. But either way, already own these. Hopefully we'll read them this year. I've got the entire Air Awakens series. I have heard that this is very similar to Avatar The Last Airbender and I love that show. So hopefully I will end up loving these. I am very intimidated by this book, but I have told myself that I'm going to try to get out of my comfort zone this coming year. And this book is definitely out of my comfort zone because I have heard that it does take place over the course of many years. So hopefully I will end up crossing two things off my list by reading this book. I'll get it off my physical TBR and I'll get myself out of my comfort zone. I've been telling myself for the past like two years since I added the Liza Lockamore series to my library that I wanted to actually read them because I've heard such amazing things. Still never got around to them, but this year, hopefully that will change. Next up, I've got the first and second book in the Foundry Side series. So I do know that there's a third book out and I know that because I saw it available via audio from my library when I was looking up if I can get these via audio and I can, so I probably will read this entire series that way. And then same goes for the Last Magician series. So I do know that there are more books out in the series other than just these three. And I know that because I saw them available via audio from my library. So that's how I'll probably read this series too. 
This next series is the Shattered Realm series. So this is actually a spinoff to the Seven Realm series, which was a series that I actually finally got off my TBR in 2022. So I definitely plan to continue on eventually with these four books. And then also I have these other books by Cinda William Chima, which is like, I don't really know what these are. I think these are companion books of sorts, but I'm pretty sure they're all a part of the same world. So hopefully after I go through those, I will go through these. Next up, I have a bunch of random like YA fantasy duology. So first up, I have like The Merciful Crow and then The Faithless Hawk. I've got Incendiary and Illusionary. No clue what these are about, but you know, they look interesting. I've got Spin the Dawn and Unravel the Dusk. Very popular stories. We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars, which I'm pretty sure is like a Mulan retelling. And I was always a fan of Mulan. So hopefully I'm correct with that. And then hopefully I will enjoy these. And then Shielded and Untethered, which I have heard you might like if you were a fan of the Kiss of Deception series, which I was a fan of so hopefully these will be good as well and then lastly for random YA duologies I have the Ravens and then the Monarchs which honestly I might end up keeping around until October time because I'm pretty sure this is like sorority witches vibes and I feel like it just it will work well to read in October and then very randomly I have the first and last book in the Red Queen series but it's okay that I don't have the middle ones because I'm probably gonna read these via audio anyway and my library has all of them and now for some very random fantasy books so first up I've got Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson next I have a Winter Keep by Kristen Kasher so this is actually the fourth book in a companion fantasy series of sorts and I was a fan of the first three books so hopefully I'll end up liking this one too. The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. Don't ask me why I own this. I wasn't even a fan of the Cool Prince series. Next I have The Iron Raven which is a spin-off book about one of my favorite characters from the Iron Face series by Julie Kagawa. I also have Uprooted and Spinning Silver by Naomi Nailback so I'm pretty sure that this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and this is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. Then I have Tales from the Hinterland which is a collection of like dark fairy tale stories that are a part of the actual like Hazelwood duology if you're if you read the series and you know what this book is but either way I own this and I never actually got around to it and I do think that it would be kind of fun to read I honestly don't even know what these two books are about but they're first books in like a fantasy series of sorts this is crown of bones and then this is the awakening they have nothing to do with each other I just held them up together next I have the night circus by Aaron Morgenstern I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this even though I actually did like the starless sea when I read it which is like another book by this author the only reason that I own Circe is because I bought it at the same time that I purchased like a song of Achilles and then I read of a song of Achilles and I didn't absolutely love it so I got stuck with this one but maybe I will actually enjoy this book more if I read it via audio you know Ninth House by Lee Bardugo I actually heard that the next book in this series might be coming out very soon so maybe I'll actually get to this one and then get to that one if I like this one we will see and then this is the prequel for the Hunger Games series so I actually did love the Hunger Games books at the time that I read it when I was probably like 12 years old so I am thinking maybe like I'll give those a second shot like go back and revisit those and then read this as well just to, like get me into the vibe we'll see the Game Changer by Neil Schusterman. I have read the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman and I did somewhat enjoy it. So maybe I will like this one too. I randomly own the first book in the Inheritance Games and I honestly don't know if I even want to read this series anymore because I feel like TikTok somewhat spoiled it for me. But nonetheless, I still own the first book. So maybe I'll give it a shot anyway. Next, I have The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. So this is the same author as Twilight and I've never even read the Twilight books, but I'm down to give this one a try because my sister absolutely loves this book. I actually didn't even purchase the book for myself. This is my sister's copy. I stole it from her probably like two years ago. She doesn't know that I still have it and thankfully she doesn't really watch my videos. So she still won't know that I still have this, but hopefully I will read this this year, enjoy it, and then be able to finally give this one back to her. I also have the first three books in the Crave series. So I have heard very mixed things about this series in general. So I think I'm definitely gonna go about trying these books out via audio because I have a feeling I could always enjoy a book more if I read it via audio instead of spending time with it and then also on top of that I only own the first three books and I'm pretty sure there's either like one or two more books out in the series and my library has all of them so that's the way I'm going to go about these. I also have this series called Chronicles of the One by Nora Roberts so this is some sort of dystopian series very much reminds me of COVID I'm pretty sure like a sickness goes all around the world and then all of a sudden everything shuts down and then it's like a dystopian story of sorts honestly don't take my word for that because I could totally be wrong but I feel like at the time that I picked this up that that's what I remember from it. And now for all of my romances. So I have the first three books in the Fallen Crest series by Dijon. I'm pretty sure there are more books in this series. I honestly don't really know if it's connected. Companion series, you gotta read them all in order. No clue, I'll have to look that up. I also have The Hate You Give by Dijon, which is actually a book that at one point I was very excited to read. Then I heard something bad about it. And then I again heard something really good about it. So now I'm again excited to give this one a try. I've got The Guy on the Right by Kate Stewart, which is a more recent add-on to my library. I did only get this a couple of months ago. I also recently added Golden Hour of You and Me by Kay Jamila because I recently read a previous book by her. And then she was actually so kind enough to send me this book. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So definitely will get to this one soon. Next, I have The Trouble with Hating 
you. I'm pretty sure this is some sort of like enemies to lovers classic rom-com of sorts. Don't take my word for that, but I have heard good things about this, even though I don't see it often. And then Ride by Harper Dallas. I've honestly been holding off on reading this book, even though I got it a couple of months ago and I've been excited to read it this entire time, only because this is a snowboarding book and I feel like I really want to read it on a snow day and I just haven't had the chance to do that yet. This next book is the first book in some random small town romance. I really don't know much about it, but I have heard good things about this author and this series in general, so I'm excited to give it a shot. Next, I have Beautifully Cruel and then A Cruel Paradise by J.T. Geisinger. So this is a mafia duology. Next, I have Scarred by Emily McIntyre. So I have read Hooked by Emily McIntyre, which is the previous book in this companion series. That was a Peter Pan retelling. Really enjoyed that one. This one, I'm pretty sure, is a Lion King retelling. Don't take my word for that. Then I have Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate. So this is, I believe, the second book in her Salacious Players Club series. I've tried the first book, didn't like the first book, loved the third book. And this second book, I do think I'm going to end up enjoying because I know that it's about like voyeurism and I like reading about that. Next, I have Nice Guys Don't Win and then Real Players Never Lose, which is the second and third book in a sports college romance of sorts. I don't really know too much about it, but I have read the first book in this series and I know that that was a college baseball romance. So I'm assuming that these are as well. Everything for You by Chloe Lieza, which is the fifth book in one of her companion series. And I'm pretty sure this is an MM sports romance. Next, I have these three books by Carl Sorensen. And then I also have Fractured Sky by Catherine Cowles, which I'm honestly really excited to pick up. I'll probably honestly pick this one up soon. I've also had the first six books in the Like Us series by Kristen Becker. She is the spinoff series to the Addicted Calloway Sister series by Kristen Becker. She was one of my favorite series of all time. And I actually purchased all these books kind of around the same time that I was reading and purchasing all the Addicted books. And I really did think that I was going to go from one series into the next because this is just a series about their children. And the thing is, is that once I finally got like a little bit away from the Addicted series and I never ended up picking these up, I never really felt like going back and actually reading about the kids. And then over this past year, I actually started to see a lot of very mixed things about these books in general. I saw a lot of details about what people were liking, what people weren't liking. And for some reason, I'm not really feeling the pull to actually ever continue on with this universe. So even though I own all of these books, I honestly do not think I will actually end up reading them this coming year, but I'm putting them on my TBR just to give myself that one last chance to say maybe. I also have Fangirl and then Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So I do know that these are somewhat connected. So if I am going to read any of them, I'll start with this one and then see if like, you know, I want to continue continue and read this one. I've never really read anything by Rainbow Rowell and yet somehow I own four of his books, but let's not talk about that. And then lastly, I have all of these random YA standalones. So we'll see if I end up getting around to these because like I said, I'm no longer really into YA, but I can read all of these via audio and maybe I'll still enjoy them somewhat. So we'll see about these. All right, well, that is every single book on my physical TBR. So I feel like I've gone through everything that I wanted to share with you today. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not currently subscribed, but either way, just thank you so much for watching because I really appreciate it. And with that said, I'm gonna say goodbye because I gotta go clean up all these books. Thank you.